What's good, y'all? Yo, yo, got out of work, bro. Fucking tired. But we're gonna do some reactions today. This shit looks interesting, bro. It's a long ass video, but we're gonna see what's good with it. It's called The Worm Animated Horror Story by Don't Walk Home Alone After Dark. Let's see what they talk about. Yo, y'all gotta start coming to the lives, bro. Start coming to the YouTube lives, bro. Pull up. But. Again, this by Don't Walk Home Alone. Let's see what they talk about. Let's see. They're supposed to be scary. Let's see what they talk about. I like the animation so far. She looks tough. This animation tough though. I've never seen the animations like this, bro. Hold on. Animations sometimes shitty, bro. This one looks tough. I like I fuck with it. But is it gonna be scary? Is the question. Hello? You don't just go straight back to it after that, bro. How the fuck the lights turn? Uh, how the fuck the lights turn off then turn back on, bro? You don't just go back to whatever you was doing after that, bro. And it does it again. GG's. Go grab a weapon, bro. The white people shit. You're doing the white people shit right now. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, hell no. I'm gonna fuck a little huge hard. Yo, why am I low-key intrigued? Hold on, they got me immersed. No. No. Be, be, war. You know where that from, bro? You go. Sparrow Moon was not at all what I thought she would be. I wasn't given much time to go over her case file before our first appointment. But from what I had read, I half expected some kind of uncontrollable monster to walk through the door. She wasn't anything like that. She was quiet and guarded, smaller in person than what I had imagined from her photograph. A perfectly normal 17-year-old girl. That made it even harder to believe she was capable of doing the things that she did. Huh. She was the last surviving member of the so-called Woodfield Five, a group of kids all from the same remote northern town who suffered a series of unexplained, at times violent, mental breaks. Clinical notes suggested some kind of shared psychosis, though unlike anything I'd ever heard of in my 20-year practice. Okay, so she survived the goat. By all accounts, Sparrow had an unremarkable childhood. No indications of behavioral difficulty, good grades in school, active social life, no family history of mental illness to speak of. Her mother had been part of some offbeat spiritual commune years earlier, but had left that tragedy in Woodfield. Five dead in violent, maybe violent murder, suicide, teenage survivor in custody. Behind when Sparrow was quite young and eventually remarried. 
There was nothing to suggest any kind of underlying trauma or abuse, though as you come to find in my line of work, that's not always so obvious. The only path to understanding what really happened in Woodfield was Sparrow herself. And that would prove more Bro, pero this shit is like a whole movie, bro. Get on to the scary part, bro. Difficult than anyone anticipated. I learned very little over the first weeks of our sessions together. Sparrow was often uncooperative, careful never to allow the growing familiarity between us to weaken her resolve. I was not as strong. I became unreasonably attached to her. The endless medical diagnostics revealed nothing we didn't already know. She barely slept. The scratches on her arms were self-inflicted. And I aside got... from high blood pressure, she was physically healthy. No one was certain about what exactly was wrong. I got to my attention span. They need to get on with the fucking story, my boy. And she was getting worse. Until the weeks turned to months and I was running out of time. The courts had determined that unless I could demonstrate conclusive progress in her treatment, Sparrow would be transferred to an isolated psychiatric. Isolated? Ward that shit makes you worse, care. bro. I could have walked away at that point. I probably should have. But you didn't but what I wanted. Go. What I've always wanted answers after all that we'd been through she wasn't a kid to me anymore she wasn't a monster either she was a puzzle to solve hmm. so she was your toy it's kind of kind of sus buddy all can be administered to induce something called narcosynthesis a state between asleep and awake where the subject is highly suggestible. In most places today, the practice is frowned upon. Normally, I would never consider such a treatment, but given the circumstances, my options were limited. I knew full well that this could risk professional censure, perhaps even my career itself. That didn't seem to matter at the time. After the injection sparrow was brought to my office, we were left alone and I asked her to count backwards from 10. Though before she even got to five, it was clear she knew something was wrong. Her breathing became shallow and her eyes darted around rapidly. Mm. She began talking about a mist coming into the room that only she could see. Uh-oh. She could hear a voice from within it calling to her. The drug had disoriented her to such a degree that I don't even think she recognized me. He thinks you're a monster. Sparrow's small size and chronic fatigue made the dosage I administered tricky. She drifted in and out for several minutes. When Lucid, I redirected her, asking if she could tell me what the voice she heard was saying. They drugged her to get her information out? Yo, you could do that? That's crazy words, bro. After a long pause, she finally whispered. Little bird. Little bird. At that point, Sparrow was not interested in answering any of my questions. She just spoke, and I listened. She said that it knew. It knew that was what he used to call her. The old man. But the voice wasn't a man's. It was something else. She said it comes with the mist. That it takes things from you and it grows. Adding to what it's taking. Just sounding like stranger things, bro. It eats you from the inside. She didn't know its name, but called it 
the worm. The worm? As Sparrow lapsed into unconsciousness, I was left with more questions than answers. I arranged to have her return to her room and resigned myself to the idea that I might never get the chance to understand the truth. That I had failed. I destroyed the records of our last session to prevent the review board from finding out what I had done. It was over. Okay. Or at least, that's what, you that's thought. what I thought. <laughs> this one starts, y'all. We it made it. That night the dream started. Nine minutes in, it's finally, feel me? It's finally getting there. Come on, y'all. I'm glad y'all made it here with me. Let's go. Now it's on. Now he got that shit. GG's in the chat for the doctor. Therapist. Y'all walk through that door? I don't know. Uh oh. Water? What the fuck is going on? Yo, the animation, great, bro. Perfect. But this shit kind of ass, bro. Come on, bro. Y'all, come on, bro. This shit kind of shitty, bro. That's not scary. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I go to sleep, it's the same. It doesn't really matter how the dream begins. Eventually. The mist will come. Mm. And with the mist always comes the worm. The worm? Just like she said it would. You can't run. That never works. It won't let you. The best you can hope for is that you wake up quick. Before it begins to feed. Okay. At first, I told myself that it would go away. It could be a simple anxiety-induced aberration brought on by the stress of dealing with the case. Yeah, so but it was done. soon obvious that wasn't it. Okay. The nightmares didn't stop. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. It wasn't long before my colleagues began to take notice. Things got so bad I had no other choice. I called in every favor, pulled every string I could, and arranged access to Sparrow at her current facility. I needed answers more than ever. And 
she still had them. Okay. Let's get these answers. I almost didn't recognize her at first. She looked strong and alert. A stark contrast to the tired girl that I had spent all that... Mm, it went from her to him. So now it's you, my boy. you the tired one. ...time with. I didn't have to ask any questions this time. Just by looking at me, she knew all too well what was happening. We sat down, and Sparrow Moon gave me what I needed. The answers. The worm is some kind of parasite. A pathogen, an ancient... My boy risen up in the background, my fault. ...thing passed from host to host, manifesting in their dreams, feeding on their deepest fears. It will not stop. Always hungry for more. It won't kill you. It doesn't want you dead. It wants what any good virus wants. To propagate. To be passed on. To be fed. Mm. Sparrow tried to hold it inside of her. To protect others. It's like a bug. I just peeped. When they're talking, they don't even talk for real. It's just pictures, yo. She thought that if she could fight it long enough, it would die with her. But she passed really the worm to me book. the same way that it had been passed to her. Really just a picture book, just right? by telling no animation. me about it. You have to believe me. I am sorry for this. Now that I've told you, I don't know when. But sooner or later in your dreams, the mist will come. He ain't coming to me. You got me fucked up. And with the mist, always comes. Always comes the worm. Damn. And I just told you, so now you have it. Huh, bro. Damn, I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't know it was a setup. Oh, add. Oh, no, nah, Grammarly's actually tough. You got no it. Told me college would be w so add, yo. W add. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, though. That was kind of... It was mid, bro. I don't know, y'all. That was, like... Animation was good, but it wasn't scary, bro. I'm gonna give that, like, a... I'm gonna give that, like, a five, like, a four. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's my rating. And I know when I need it, I can count on you. Like for three, two, you'll be there. And I know when I need it, I can count on you.